Uh, tell me a little bit, we've talked about this, uh, larotrectinib, uh, and I know you were involved in the study for larotrectinib. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, I know it was unique as, in a way that it was in pediatrics and in uh, adults, and I was looking at the data, which, I mean, it shows like patients were from 0.3 years of age, which is a few months, all the way to, you know, in the 70s. So can you tell me a little bit about the study and what were the what were some of the findings sure. of the study? So um, the data that was presented in the New England Journal paper, um, the data that was presented uh, by my colleague, Dr. Dave Hyman at ASCO, and most recently we presented the data uh, at ESMO, which was uh, additional data from that was published in New England Journal. Um, really it comp composed three trials. One was the phase one trial, which I was involved in, the phase two navigate adult study, which I was also involved in, and lastly, the scout study, which was a pediatric study. And it kind of um, accumulated all of the patients who had intract fusions, looking at overall response rates, duration of response, et cetera. Um, the most recent data was presented at ESMO this past year, um, and there was about 122 patients uh, in that data set. And uh, what's remarkable is, is that um, even from the phase one to this 122 patient data set, the response rates have remained relatively consistent. And that's close to 85% of these patients, um, or uh, I'd say 83% of these patients have had, a, uh, have had some kind of partial response. And what's even more remarkable, 17% of these patients have had a complete response. And as you know, Dr. Pant, that you rarely see this in solid tumor. And so that, that, that's really kind of exciting to see kind of uh, that data. So what we're seeing is this is, uh, these are solid tumors, which were patients who were put on the study had a complete response. That means the tumor was, they couldn't find tumor when the scans were done or a partial response. That means there was significant shrinkage of the tumor more than 30% by rhesus. Yes. So it was about, you're saying both in the pediatric and in the adult population it was kind of similar around 83% right. got a response? So if you look at the pediatric data for scout data, that, that response rate is probably even higher. It's almost close to 90 some percent partial response, I think, and, and also um, uh, fairly high uh, partial response slash, uh, sorry, complete response. So it, it is a pretty dramatic um, waterfall graph, which, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when you see it, and uh, I've rarely seen a a waterfall graph like that in any study. That means you really saw a lot of responses. There were not so many who progressed. You saw mostly a, a responses. What did you find in patients who progressed? Like the patients who progressed, was there something specific in those patients yeah. who progressed? I'm just, I'm not saying the ones who responded then progressed, but the ones who just did not respond off the bat. Yeah, so there was a very few number of patients who did not respond. Uh, we don't have the full data set. Um, at least one of those patients in the data set had, the, uh, had a pre-existing solvent front mutation. Uh, which, uh, you know, um, put them at, a, a, you know, resistance to larotrectinib in itself. Tell me a little bit about this mutation. You said solvent front mutation? Yes, it's, a, it's, it's called a solvent front mutation, which is a change in one of the um, actual amino acids uh, 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 that, um, that forms that ATP pocket. Uh, solvent front or gatekeeper, these are just different names for different uh, types of mutations that arise. And similar to other... Um, uh, mutations that arise, whether it's in EGFR or whether it's in KID, et cetera, these mutations oftentimes cause a conformational change in that pocket so that the drug cannot actually bind uh, to, uh, to that ATP and so it no longer functions as a really uh, viable drug. So it's a resistance which we've seen, like you've said, in other GIST and everything, but sometimes the resistance is that the target is not there. It's just not binding, so it's not, not based, it cannot uh, allow it the drug forward. to conformationally bind to that.